Ladies and gentlemen, you tuned in. New episode, Music is a Love Language. I'm your host, Clint Coley. No AKAs. Right down to business. My guy, Case. What up, Bill? Co-host. He's here. You know, I mean, look, man. Where I'm at with this is right now, with this podcast. You know, I like that we we got your take mm -hmm. on episodes that I used to do. Mm -hmm. And now I have... An actual co-host here, so that we both can agree, right? Right, right. It's one thing where I gotta agree with a fucking stranger. <laughs> now yeah. I get to it. I gotta agree with somebody who's like, nah, nigga, this is what it is too. Right. So here we go. We've done the story of '80s R&B. Actually, we did that with you. Sure did. Yeah. We did the story of '90s R&B. I don't remember who I did it with. Mm -hmm. Did the story of 2000s R&B. I don't think I did the stories of 2010s R&B, but that's neither here nor there. Right. Let's go back. Story of 70s R&B. Now, Case, I want you to talk to me because this is your wheelhouse, right? Very much so, yeah. 70s, Case, what are you doing? Where are you at? 70s, I was born in 71. And so 70s R&B is all that was in my house. Um, so you got the records down on the floor by the record player, the, the old school record player with the, with the, with the, with the, with the smoke glass front. The, the, with the thick glass. The so I'm smoke going. glass front. Yes, yes, Yeah, you know, yes, what, I'm I know about. what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, so we had that in the double doors. And so I'm down there in the records, and it's it's everything in there. It's, um, it's all the Motown. It's the Jackson 5. It's Marvin Gaye. It's Earth, Wind & Fire. It's the Delphonics. It's yeah. the Stylistics. It's Blue yeah. Magic. Blue Magic. Uh, Let the Parliament. side show yeah, you. Yeah, B. It's, it's um, Parliament Funkadelic yeah. records. It's... Um, it's, it's, it's just all type of stuff, and so I'm just I'm just immersed in that, which is why I don't know how to play cards, because when yeah. my cousins was learning from the you know at the gatherings, yeah, I'm down there in the old records. Well, they were old. So you mean to tell me you can't listen to music? And, I know music and I play cards. Nah, I was trying to make music, not just listen to it. Say less. You right? Yeah, I was. You know, man, everybody always got an excuse on why they don't know how to play spades. Now I don't play no cards. So you don't play pity pack, I don't Uno. Play shit, I, I play Uno. That don't count. That's cards. Ah. All right. Yeah, well, people, every time I tell people, you, you, you know, I don't know I play spades. Well, I play Uno. Yeah, Uno's not cards. I, even I know that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. We're on the same page. All right. So let's talk. Story of 70s R&B. This is how we do it. Yes, sir. We name some names. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is, because here's the thing. I don't like when people try to tell a story and then they be like, yo, long story, long story short, long story mm -hmm. short, but the, the story ends up being long. Yeah. We're going to do long story short. <laughs> seven names. Mm -hmm. The story of seven, 70s R&B. Who do we have? Seven? Seven names. Yeah, we got to. Yeah. No, I understand it, but that just that just limits it to the top of the top. And there's so much more. I, a, I agree, I but you know. it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, and I we're going to give people, other people their flowers. Right, 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 okay. It's not that we're not. Now, the next part to this is too, does funk count? Yeah, that's what R&B was. Okay, funk does count. Yeah. All right. Case, give me two names. Uh, well, I started at the beginning of the decade. You got um, the Delphonics, um, Jackson 5. Okay. Explain why they, they should be on the list. Uh, the Jackson 5 was Motown's answer to Sly and the Family Stone, and that was the Motown shift into that psychedelic, um, psychedelic R&B funk sound. Um, it, it, that signaled the shift of, of their, their musical sound. And the Delphonics was one of the, that was one of my mom's favorite groups. Um, and in the 70s, there was a lot of groups. There was a lot of three-man groups. Well, a lot, definitely a lot of three-man groups. Yeah, a lot groups. of three-man groups. Let's real quick, man, I mean, outside of the Delphonics, can we just real quick, let's, let's well, we'll go, we'll get to them, but the three-man groups, we got the Delphonics, you got uh, the OJs. The OJs. You got, uh, who else was three? It was a lot of them. Who? Um, the main ingredient. The main ingredient, okay. Um, was New Birth three people? Nah, New Birth was like a hundred of them. They was a band, though. You're right. Yeah, it, it was. It might have been 200. It was a gang of them on stage. Okay. Um, it, it was a bunch of them that not coming. It was the OJs. You had uh, the Delphine Stylist. This was five. There was um, the OJs. There was Blue Magic was like five, I think. Um, damn, who else is it? Blue Magic was three people? No, Blue Magic was like four or five, I think. So then I guess you, you in your mind, you probably thought... No, I guarantee <laughs> that <there's laughs> a bunch of them, I'm like, oh yeah, them. You know what I mean? Because like, all yeah. I can picture on TV is three dudes doing the... 
Because like I'm looking around, the spinners aren't three dudes. No, the spinners is, is uh, five. Yeah, I mean, the the emotions were three. No, they were three girls. The emotions were three the emotions girls. The emotions were three girls. Um, the dramatics weren't three dudes. The shot lights weren't three dudes. The shot lights was, was four? Shot lights was four. Wow. Yeah, so it must have been in my mind that it was three. must have been in your mind. But yeah, it was a lot of groups. It was definitely a lot there of groups. There was definitely a lot of groups and a lot of bands. All right, so... <laughs> We're going to name some names outside of the two names that we know for a fact is, you know, Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder. Right. So, yeah. we, yeah. Right, we, right, right. We'll get to the, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we know. We, yeah. we know. Yeah. So, let's, let's, let's challenge ourselves mm-hmm. and let's talk about other people before we get right. to, we, right. we, we know those two. Yeah, we know who dominated the decade. They dominated, yeah. <laughs> they, and on the female side, Aretha Franklin dominated. dominated they, the decade. they started to name that Grammy Award, the Aretha Franklin yeah, Award. Yeah, they dominated. Because she was winning every year. All right, so... I got two two people. Mm-hmm. I got two names. I got two. I got two. I got two. I got two. Um, I don't know if he's seventies. Well, yeah, yes, he is. Yes, he is. It'd be Teddy Pendergrass. Yeah, he's definitely seventies. Well, only because I know he got early, very early eighties. But like, I think it was like his, his like it that was, was like, the end. It's like the, yeah, yeah, that was the end. Yeah, but yeah, but the seventies, the seventies, he was, was that he, nigga. Okay. Yeah, Howard Melvin and the Blue Notes hey, was the beginning exactly of it. That's exactly what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. So yes, give me. Teddy Pendergrass. Definitely. Now, I don't think he was the answer to Marvin Gaye, right? Because I'm about to name two. But I don't think he was the answer to Marvin Gaye. But let's be honest. When you're talking about a guy who had that sex appeal Mm -hmm. that women loved, and he was like, he was, I mean, for all intents and purposes, right? Like, he was what a woman, most women in that era was looking for. And that's what he he was... Put there as the right. answer to yeah. yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. know if he was. The, so you're saying he was the answer to Marvin Gaye. I don't know if he was, but that's what it was. That's that's what it was meant to be. Right. So right. So Teddy Pendergrass. I mean, yes, he was. Will you think he was? Who, Sam Cooke was probably R and B's first real sex symbol. Yeah, Sam Cooke was really the first R and B singer. Right. So he. But Teddy Pendergrass was like he was. Like, like I mean, he look, was probably, but my aunt got fucked by Teddy Pendergrass. A lot of people's aunts got fucked by Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> <laughs> you can figure that one out. But no, there, there was a bunch of you got to think about it. There was um, from the sixties, there was a bunch of there was a bunch of stars, R and B stars. But it started with Sam Cooke. Yeah, and the, and as far as seventies, it was it was pretty much Teddy Pendergrass and Marvin Gaye. Yeah, was, and I mean, he was just like uh, I mean, it was like a, I mean, I mean. I mean, the fact that he was, you know, he had concerts. You know, Big Daddy Kane told me this. He was like, you know. Oh, the all-women joints. Yeah, yeah, he had yeah. the all-women concerts, and he would come out in a robe. Yeah. And the nigga would fucking have all, like, I think him and Marvin Gaye was doing that. Like, Marvin Gaye had one joint where he came out in, like, silk pajamas or some shit like that. Like, yeah, but that, that was different. That's crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but I'm saying, like, you out there, and then, like, apparently he was giving out, like, teddy bears. Yeah, giving out the teddy bears. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Big Daddy Kane was telling me he had, he had, he would do, he would do, like, he would do like he give you a candy cane and mm-hmm. it would have suck on cane. Right. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Teddy Pendergrass had 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 teddy bears and like yeah. he was just like it was again, he was like now even though he was for the women, how did the niggas feel about him? Um I don't know. I mean dudes, well you know dudes is going to go wherever whatever the girls like. They cuz it's a lot of dudes that don't even like R&B, but yeah. they know that girls do and so they're right. going to they're going to play it. Right. So right. I mean it Throughout the history of mankind, we tend to follow y'all. Uh, man, man. Yeah, from Flintstones to now. From the Flintstones, from the Flintstones to, now. to now. We've been following them around. So, you know, that's, that's pretty much how that's going to go. I'm good with that. All right. And then also let me get... So again, we talk about this. We talk about Parliament. We talk about Funkadelic. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to make them one. Mm-hmm. Give me Parliament Funkadelic. In the seventies, yeah, that's a movement. Let's discuss them for a, for a second. Talk to me. That's a movement. They it started. Um, well, for me, the first one that I heard was Parliament, and uh, the first Parliament albums was just so dope. Uh, the the first one, and then once the once the funk side of it the, with the Parliament albums, it was just a, it was just a movement. It was domination. And then they had the Parliament cartoons. Yeah. For the um, for the ads, they had they had the cartoons. The um. They had the Dr. Funkenstein, and he had all these First of all, egos. man, can we talk about Dr. Funkenstein for one second? Uh, yeah. My mom would be remiss if I don't talk about Dr. Funkenstein. Like, yeah. my mom is also, get, was, uh, uh, like, she, 
Dr. Funkenstein, that album and the song, mm -hmm. my mom is like, you throw that on, it's like it's over. Yeah, she she in the kitchen. You it's know over. They had the agony of defeat. Yeah, they had all. He had all type of characters. My favorite Parliament album is is Mothership Connection. Yeah, that's yeah. um, you know, just the la da da da. That was da, that was pretty much the peak. Da 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 well, all right. Yeah, 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 well, all right. Well, all right. You know when yeah, I first Chocolate City. You know what's weird? When you know the first time I ever heard that song? What? The first time I ever heard Mothership Connection was on live NBA Live 1999. Wow. Yeah, I was I was I was I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Uh I'm pl playing PlayStation mm -hmm. and you know, you know, NBA Live before 2K, it was NBA Live. Right. That was that right, was right. the game. Right. So, I remember putting the disc in. I remember I'm getting ready to play NBA Live and then all you hear is Doom, doom, like doom, 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 doom. Yeah. Well, all right. I'm like, hey, yeah. Doo -doo -doo. And I'm, that, that was serious. That was a that was a bop, man. That was a bop. He had nothing but he had top tier musicians just in and out, which made for it makes for a messy publishing situation. A business that's a messy business move. Right, 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 right. The right, music right, right. is undeniable. Right, definitely. And then also with with that with that album, you know, or with that joint, man. Um, you know, of course, man, they were known for their live shows. Yeah, nobody but had did the a live spaceship. Nobody did a live show like them. Ah, uh, no, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, who else? Earth, Wind, and Fire. When we'll get Verdine to them in a second. Used to levitate. They levitated. Verdine used to be playing the bass, and he would levitate across the state playing the bass, nigga, in the seventies. That's why I said, don't say nobody That's did it. Crazy. Trip. Your man used to levitate. The only reason why I'm just saying, like, like, I was, I said that. I guess it was more so because you know the whole the whole spaceship coming yeah, down. Yeah, it was crazy. That, That's it was ridiculous, crazy. right? With the smoke. It's yeah, smoke is coming like, in he, he, outside of yeah. It was, yeah, it was but like we'll get to Earth, Wind, and Fire in a yeah. second. But man, yeah, like I mean, levitating and all that other stuff. Levitating. That's ridiculous. As he's going faster, faster, he start levitating. That's ridiculous. Which is kind of like a thing. It was them and Kiss. They was trying to go yeah. back and forth. Oh, Kiss, Kiss, so to, oh, Earth, Wind, or, 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 or Parliament. Both. But, we're going back was, but mostly Earth, Wind, and Fire. With there's there there's and Kiss because Earth, Wind, and Fire will have like some magic type of stuff in yeah. theirs and. Yeah. All that type, and then Kiss was doing stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. Gene Simmons used to, yeah, levitate. Like well, he didn't levitate. He went flying in the air when he stopped mm -hmm. playing the bass face. Mm -hmm. So it made it, it's dope when it's show like that because everybody's That's trying fair. to top each other. That's fair. I yeah. like that. I like that. All right, give me give me a name. Barry White. That's a huge the name. Maestro. That's a huge name. Talk to me about Barry White. Barry White was a musical genius. He he was a conductor. He was a musician. He um. He had like the thick, lush orchestrations in his music. They was the the intros were super. Long. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. Thick and lush with Barry White in the same sentence is nasty work. Yeah, that's a pause. But no, it's not. I if gotta you pause listen that. To it, nah, it's lush. I gotta pause that, man. Nah, man. I gotta pause that. I said man. his music, not him. <laughs> the music. <But> <laughs> the music. I didn't say him. Thick and lush. Oh, you thinking man. about? You thinking about his hair? I'm talking about the music. Shit, nigga, him too. I said the lush strings and stuff. Yes, yes. No, he I'm teasing. Now he had really lush, warm, full like musical arrangements. Um, I, there's a video of an interview he was doing, and he's breaking the song down. He's in the studio. He he's playing the he got the the track with the drums playing. He's like that's the heartbeat of the record, and that's what this. He's like okay, and I bring the cellos in, and then bring the and he could actually conduct the actual orchestra. So he. He was he was the maestro for a reason. I actually sampled one of his songs for one of my songs. Which one would you? Which one? Would you? Uh, for can I be? Okay. Um, and what happened was when we went to get it cleared, he had gotten sick, mm. and then they stopped clearing stuff, and then he passed like maybe a month after that. Mm. So mm. so R.I.P. to the maestro though, but that that dude was serious. Yeah, no, no, Barry White. Um, I mean, look, man, that's all for talk to talk about. Even though outside of him being a conductor, orchestrator, all of that, mm -hmm. his voice, his voice is crazy. Like there is, it, there's nobody. Like it's like Melvin Franklin walked, yeah. So dude. Barry White could run. You know what I'm saying? Barry White, and he and the stuff that he would say, like, like you hear the strings coming. Has it come to this? Right. And he's like, whoa. What you about to say? You know, baby. Yeah, you know, baby. But how you just be like? Has it come to this? Like how now we'd be like, we doing this? Like, has it come to this? Yeah. Like he he has his his deep voice. Yeah. It's 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 it's. There's not much more, like, because what's crazy? Some of them songs is about disagreements, right? right? The way he say, "I wish I could argue like that." Well, I mean, think about it. You know, when you have a voice like that, I'm not arguing with you. He is, but you don't even know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not arguing with you, this? man. I'm not arguing with you. you okay, know, baby. 
You know, baby. We can't go on like this. So, you know, we talk about we talk about um we talk about baritones, right? So you got him, Mike from Boys the Men. No, they, they bass. That's bass. So what's the difference? So is Barry it, White? He's bass or baritone. What's the difference? Barry White is a bass. And what the are bass they? is the baritone is like uh David Ruffin. Okay, so okay, so bass is okay. That's so, the bottom, yeah. Okay, okay. Like, right. Yeah, them dudes. Are, all right, they so, hold everything so together. Is Marvin Gaye is, is he baritone? No, he's a he's a tenor. He's a tenor. Okay, so okay, so there's soprano. And uh, yeah, that's that's them. I'm just saying up there. Yeah, that's them. There's soprano. Then there's alto. Uh, yeah, you got altos. Then there's tenor. Then the second tenors, the tenors, baritone, that's, and then bass. And then bass. Yeah. Okay, thank you for school. But that me. dude that. there, yeah, they. But his joint was like. A different kind of bass. Yeah, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, Barry White, though. Again, like, Mike from Boys. His joint was like thunderous. No, no, he like, had a yeah. That is exactly. It was thunderous. That's you know what's crazy when on the Secret Garden. Of course, this is in the eighty late eighties, right? But Barry White's voice, like the Secret Garden, has kind of has rain in it and blah mm-hmm. blah 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 blah. And if we're talking about that, he does bring the thunder. Yeah, his voice to is like that, that record. Yeah. Like, you know, I'll take good care of you. Of you, like that's as for the man. So that that's some thunderous yeah, shit right yeah. there. You're right. You're right. Yeah, Barry White is thunder. Yeah, it's thunder. So if the, if he was in Earth, Wind and Fire, Earth, Wind, wind fire, fire, he's thunder. And thunder, baby. That's that's fair. Yeah, that's he, fair. he's Barry White is thunder. The maestro. Barry White is thunder. All right, I got I got one for you. I'm gonna go in that same realm. Mm-hmm. Give me Isaac Hayes. Yeah. Let's talk like Isaac Moses. Hayes. Let's talk Isaac Hayes. Talk. You know what's crazy? I got to know Isaac Hayes in the 90s when he was working in New York at the radio station. And I would just sit and talk to him. And my aunt had the um, it was the Black Moses album. And it folds out. And he's like, I got the, the Black Moses album downstairs. Yeah. And when he used to come out on stage with the with the shirt made out of chains. Yes. And he'd be like, yep. just bust the joint. Yeah, Isaac Hayes was super cool. And like I was saying, if you, you could put on an Isaac Hayes album and... In one song, every four bars is a different hip hop sample song, be that same. they yep. that they just they just take. Like he was another dude that was extremely musical. He was a, he could conduct the orchestra. You know what I'm saying? They, them dudes they different. Yeah, no, you know and that's, they that's play the, stuff and they and they that's write the thing, music. right? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. It's like Isaac Hayes is much more than we're talking R and B. He's much more than just like he's a singer and he's this. Like yeah. you know he he he's also such a Phenomenal composer. Yeah, composer. Com- yeah. He. This is a guy, and I mean, if we being honest, right? We're talking about, and we talk about seventies R and B, right? Mm-hmm. And we talk about, we let's talk. We got to talk about stacks, right? Yeah. You yeah. got to talk about stacks. You cannot. You can't talk. You, you can't. can't. Yeah. You can't tell. I mean, I mean, it's we, all part of it. Yeah, stacks, right? It's and he is. Would you say between him and Otis Redding, in a sense, right? Mm-hmm. That was that stacks in the in the grand scheme of things. Not to say that there's not yeah. more or less. No, 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 yeah, yeah. But it's like, um, and then also, man, let's have another conversation. Well, it, oh, yeah, because Otis Redding was gone by the '60s, but 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 he was he was there too. He right was next, yeah, yeah. yeah. Isaac yeah. Hayes was like, if you go to the Stack Museum, yeah, Isaac Hayes yeah. is a big piece of oh, what, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the next part to Isaac Hayes is, man, he does one of the best. I mean, there's. Well, We'll get to another guy who does another mm. soundtrack in the seventies, but he does one of the best. The the shaft shit. Yeah. That that's he won an Oscar. I think he won an Oscar and a Grammy for that. I know he won an Oscar. Let's look. He performed it at the Oscars. And that's a big thing, especially in nineteen seventy two. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or seventy three, whatever exactly. year. That's big. Definitely. Then. That's huge. And he came out looking like Isaac Hayes. Right. That's another thing. Right. Exactly. Like he he didn't switch it up. Exactly. Uh, I'm looking at the shaft. First of all, we don't even need to have a conversation. Billboard charts, Billboard two hundred. They called it black albums back in the day. Wild. The uh, colors. The colors. <laughs> huh. They still call this the colors, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and jazz album number one. Uh, the 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 song shaft, the shaft, uh, black singles we went to number two. Adult contemporary went to number six, and of course, Billboard Hot 100 went to number one. Um, he uh, did win an Oscar yeah. for theme from Shaft. That is that's insane to win. Yeah, in the seventies, right? Right, and then he wins three Grammys mm-hmm. for this album, but he's nominated. For, he's nominated for one, two, three, four, five, six. He's nominated for seven Grammys. Yeah, and mind you, this is pre-Michael Jackson. Yeah. 
and wins. He's three out of seven. He wins best instrumental arrangement. He wins best original score written for a motion picture or a television special. Yep. Best engineered recording, non classical. Yep. Those are musician awards. Yeah, those are musician awards. Those are musician awards. Uh, yep. Recorded in uh, 1971, released July 1971. Ain't got nothing to do with singing. And nothing. nothing that's, just, that's musician awards. So. That's and it, was, you need it to know. was recorded in Memphis, Tennessee at Stacks Recording yep. Studios. Yeah, that's crazy, right? That's in, but then the nigga follows it up with Black Moses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because now I'm going. Yeah, he follows now it I'm up going. with Black Moses. Yeah. So, yeah, man, uh, can't, you know, for me, Isaac Hayes is, we, we, when we start erasing names, yeah. that's going to be a tough one to erase. All right, give me a name. Who you got? Al Green. Got Al Green. He, Al Green came on the scene, boss. Um, and I remember the the my first memories of Al Green is my aunt Carol. Um, we would wake up on Saturday mornings to the vacuum cleaner and Al Green to love and happiness. That's what would wake us up: the vacuum cleaner and Al Green. So for me, Al Green has always been synonymous with cleaning the house. Right, and um, Al Green he has joints. He's he's synonymous with cleaning the house, and he's synonymous with grits. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the, for, the, for the absolute wrong reason. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. a, he's synonymous with 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 with. You with, right about that? Cleaning house yeah. and grits. I mean, it's just yeah. the bottom line. Yeah, you right about that. <laughs> yeah, that's a wild story too. So wild ass story. Um, I like Al Green. Mm -hmm. I just let me ask a question: Does Al Green have any rings as an album? Um, yeah, probably. Like, he got some singles. I don't. I don't see him with any rings, man. What's the one with the um, with the with the green? That's a, that's a greatest hits joint. No, 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 no. Let me see. I'm looking. We don't need to, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm just, look, I'm going to go to his discography. This man, first of all, this man put out an album in 2008. I'm still in love with you is what I'm talking about. I'm still I'm in still, love with you. That's 72. Yeah. Let me see if that's right. I'm ring. still in love with you. I'm glad you're mine. Love and happiness. He got Simply Beautiful on there and for the good times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sold on Al Green. On a, no, 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 not on him not being on the list. Oh no, I, no, I, oh, I'm not sold on this album being a ring. That album's silly. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that, mad that at right. it. Yeah. I'm not Simply mad at beautiful it. Beautiful is my joint. I'm not. I don't know if I want to call that a ring. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's rated 98 on Rolling Stone. Oh no, the song Love and Happiness. Is rated ninety eight on Rolling Stone's five hundred greatest songs. Okay. I thought I was about to say I thought it was the album. I'm about to be like, uh oh, all right. Well, if it's one of Rolling Stone's greatest albums, I, 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 I don't and know. I don't, we Rolling don't Stone. listen to Rolling yeah, Stones. To but if you, if that has to, I'm not saying it goes into consideration. But it's like, all right, that makes me look at the album. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, a little, little different. different. Yeah, yeah. That's all yeah. I'm saying. I'm not yeah. saying that's my. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, you got Al Green. Mm -hmm. Give me my guy. Give me my guy. Give me my guy, Mister. Curtis Mayfield. Yeah, that's my dude right there. Mr. Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield is another one like Isaac Hayes. Write music. Yeah, compose all of it. that. And think of the stuff he did for other people. That's just out of here. Like, you know, that's your guy. What's this, the uh, Superfly soundtrack? Curtis Mayfield might be one of the most underrated R&B people that we've ever seen. You talk about a Ever. guy that really goes under the radar a lot. Mm -hmm. It's it's really insane how much he does go into the, uh, go under the radar. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, here's the crazy thing: he only has two Grammy awards, right? And the only Grammy awards he has is for lifetime achievements. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Like that's fucked up, man. Right? Like nineteen. Now here's the thing. He's nominated for a Grammy for best score written, best score written for uh, motion television or picture, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the same year as, or if there, if that was the, I don't think it, I don't think that that was the same Grammys as, as uh, uh, Shaft, right? Yeah, because Shaft was seventy one and uh, Superfly was seventy two, I think. Yeah. yeah, but what 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 what's even wild is though, right? Like in, I, in my mind, they're probably just saying we're not giving a nigga two years in a row. <laughs> we it's just there's no way we're gonna do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah, that's that's that is two years in a row. Two years in a row. Yeah, I messed with Curtis. And then the then the the sound the uh, soundtrack for Claudine, he wrote yeah, and composed all of that. With Gladys it Knight was, and the Pips. 
is Aretha Franklin. I mean, and Sparkle was yeah. the Aretha Franklin album. That one too. He did that whole soundtrack. Yep, that was 1976. Yep, yep, yeah. Um, my favorite. Oh, he also did the soundtrack to Let's Do It Again. I forgot about that. Remember yep. Uptown Saturday yeah, Night? In the, I just watched all of it. Me and my daughter. I, I, let's do it again. It. Yeah, I forgot he did that soundtrack too. Yeah, man. Yep, staple singers. Um, one of my favorite songs by him is actually. Mary J. Blige pretty much just took the beat mm-hmm. and made it be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a Curtis Mayfield. Right, right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. I forget the name of the song. Um, but yeah, my that- favorite probably is "If There's Hell Below, We All Gonna Go." Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. he was one of the first people making protest music too. Yes, he was with impressions. Yes, he was. And they was like, "Say uh, it's all right." Yeah, he was. Oh, and remember, there's a chain coming. Don't people need- get yeah, people ready. get ready. Yeah. Yep. There's a yep. train to come in. Yep. So he I had agree. that. He had um he he just had he just had joints. He was one of the first per, first people that I heard say nigga on the radio on the record. Yes. On, oh, is he the, yes. <laughs> Whitey's niggas. Yes. Yes. He was one of the first people. Yes. And then I heard Stevie Wonder say it. After that, he was like, well, we can say nigga? Yep. Bet. Bet. All right. Curtis Mayfield was the first gangster rapper. Let's get back. Let's let's get to that in a second. Mm-hmm. Let's get to that in a second. Um Talk to me about. You said, wait, you said Curtis Mayfield is, is the first gangster rapper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that, to me, that's Superfly for sure. Well, not even. Well, actually, no. Superfly actually, he said he saw the movie, and he was like, "This is like a commercial for being a drug dealer." So for his sure. thing was, "I'm gonna do the opposite with the sound." So the soundtrack, which is genius, the sound, and people don't even realize it. The soundtrack to Superfly is telling you not to be a drug dealer right. while the movie is glorifying it. Telling, yeah, right. And he right. did that on purpose because he said he couldn't be a part of that. That's, yeah. But he was also he was the first one, like I said, talking about conscious stuff in the records. One of the first ones. Freddie's dead. And then he said nigga on the record. He definitely and he said yelled that. nigga. That's real. And people have sampled that nigga hundreds of times already. That's funny. All right, what's your? Uh, give me your next. Uh, give me your next artist. Uh, next artist, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um. They were one of the ones that I was going to put up there with Marvin. Okay. And, but, so, but, 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 no. We're getting to, close to the, to the end okay. of the list. Okay. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Not only were they a tight band. Super tight. But they were, they were tight vocally, too. Yeah. Like, out, like outside of the, the, you know, the, the horns and outside of the, the guitar and the, and the yeah. bass, outside of all of that. Yeah. That motherfucker, fucking Philip Bailey, is bad. Philip Bailey's different. He a bad dude, man. And remember, and they went from the beginning because Earth, Wind, and Fire's first album, I think, came out in seventy or seventy one. No, they had albums, I believe. So I think, what is it? I think about loving you or something like that. Um, I got all of them. Yeah, they got. A, yeah, they. But, remember, they used to have a girl in the group. Yes. Yeah. They didn't hit, but you know, of course, they didn't hit. They so that's the way the world came out in seventy two. Yeah, but that, they had there was yes. there was the other one. I'm going to their discography. The, um, their first album they was had a lot of instrumental stuff on it. Their first album, their first album was 1971, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay, I thought it was 70. Yeah, yeah, it was 1971. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and they went the whole decade. And wait a minute, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong about that's the way of the world. And I'm going to date that's this. That's the way it was. 76. It was 75. Five. I'm okay. going to date this album only because date this uh, podcast. Only because we talk about bands before this, mm-hmm. and on that I said they were it was 72, mm-hmm. 75. No, I don't, you didn't say it on that, on that one. I, I did. I, I said it only because it? I said it was the year that my father graduated high school. Ah, okay. So it was 75, though. My, di- grad, yeah. my dad graduated 72, but it was mm-hmm. 75. Right. And they recorded out here in LA or in Burbank. Yeah. Man, I tell you, that's, that's a, it's a soundtrack for a movie called That's the Way of the World with Harvey Keitel. Yep. Yep. Which yep. I tried to watch, but in the, in the movie, in the studio, uh, doing the song in the movie. That's if I remember, the movie comes on with them in the studio making the song. They have a live version of this album. Yeah. That's the way the world alive in 75. Yeah. they, But they dominated. They came out at the beginning and they just dominated, dominated. the whole decade. That's the and way. And they spawned so, much, so yeah. many other people because you couldn't keep up with them. You definitely like I, couldn't keep up with them. I had that conversation with Charlie Wilson before and he would say because the, the first Gap Band albums had an earth, wind, and fire sound to them. Mm-hmm. Cause everybody, and they was like, yo, we was doing this and that, but he's like, couldn't nobody fuck with them. Like you couldn't, they, they wouldn't get out of nobody's way. I'm looking at Earth, Wind, and Fire's discography. These motherfuckers put out an album in 79, 
77, mm -hmm. 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, and 2 and 71. So technically, mm -hmm. these motherfuckers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, damn near every year of the 70s. Yeah. There is, they, that is the epitome of the story of 70s That's r &B. Them. Yeah. If you put out an album, damn, and why they didn't put out an album in 78, who knows? It was just nonstop. It was just not, and probably because all in all came out at the end of seventy seven, which November twenty November twelfth, number November twenty first, nineteen seventy seven is when all, uh, all in all came out, mm -hmm. and then I am came out in June of seventy nine, and that's with Boogie Wonderland. I am I has had Boogie Wonderland, didn't it? Let me look at the track listing. Uh, yes. Yeah, I thought um, so. with and one emotions because emotions was um yep. Maurice White's group. Yeah, and also they have after the love. Oh is yeah. Gone. Yeah. Well, you That's what David right Foster wrote after the love is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then my favorite joint um on there actually is Wait. I have a, they have a joint on there called Wait. I've been Them dudes. waiting so long. That, yeah. Yes. My favorite joints is probably Serpentine. Serpentine, Serpentine Fire is my joint. Crazy. Kalimba. That was a yep. I love Kalimba. I love uh Body Out. Body out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Body yaddy, 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 And yaddy, everybody yaddy. loves Sun Goddess, Ramsey yeah. Lewis. The yes. Ramsey Lewis song. Cause First of all, shout out to Ramsey Lewis. Yeah. One of the best piano players. Well, man. actually, Maurice White started his career. He was the drummer in the Ramsey White trio. Oh, wow. Ramsey Lewis trio. I'm wow. Sorry, in the Ramsey wow. Lewis trio. And that's why Earth, Wind, and Fire went and did the Sun Goddess song. Listen to this, though. You got Serpentine Fire. Then Fantasy. Yeah, Fantasy. <laughs> fantasy was my ringtone for then the longest. Then you got Fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Love Heart Holiday is also on that side of the album too, as well as Jupiter. September is my joint too. September, I mean, yeah. that's everybody's joint. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, EWF, it's my turn. Mm -hmm. Give me, give me, the Isley Brothers. Yeah, I used to get in trouble listening to the, um, because I would keep going to. Um, I try to play my music. Time still wait. Time still wasting. It's like there's no guarantee, and the, and the chorus goes. I try to play my music. They say my music too loud. I tried talking about it. I get the big run around. And when I roll with the punches, I get knocked on the ground by all this bullshit. Mm. And my mother be, why you keep playing that song? Just because you can say bullshit? No, I couldn't say it. But I mean, just because you, you would say it? Yeah, yeah. And all right. Especially if I was mad about something. That's my way of cursing at them. So, Osley Brothers and Earth, Wind & Fire did a versus, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no winner or loser, in my opinion. That was, you know, I, I think it was just... To me, and I wasn't mm -hmm. I wasn't judging it on the who. It was just a good. It was. It's just good to yeah. Yeah, it was on Easter Sunday. But look, we just said that Earth, Wind, and Fire dropped an album every year in the seventies. Well, here we go. Fight the power was my Ozzy Brothers. Album. The yeah. Ozzy Brothers from the from seventy to seventy nine. Set they they did an album in the seventy. It's nineteen seventy. Dropped one in 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77. <laughs> 78 and 79. Yeah. Every and they was kind of they was doing it into the 80s too, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah, they was just going. They were going. Um, my favorite one from that era probably was either Go for Your Guns or yeah, Three like Plus Three. I like Fight the Power too. But Fight the Power. Choices. Well, here's the thing Fight the Power. That's not an album. Fight the Power wasn't that's not an album. What's that on Three Plus Three? I'm about to look now, but I can see a, the cover. There's no, there's no Fight the Power album. I'm so you that Fight now. the Power is on. Now, first of all, real quick, on 3 plus 3, That Lady is on there. That's Don't Let Me Be Lonely Tonight. That's my joint. Summer Breeze. Like, and those two songs are remakes, which is crazy. Yep. But they... Them, uh, Go For Your Guns has uh, has uh, um, uh, Footsteps in the Dark. Dope. And um, Living the Life, The Pride, and I believe... Oh, and It Voids to Atlantis. I think Fight the Power is the first song on which I, whichever album is it on. Is it on 3 plus 3? Then where the hell is three, uh, Fight the Power? I'm about to look now. I got you. I got you. Fight the Power Part 1. What if it never existed? Fight the Power Part 1 is on Go For You. Uh, it's on... The Heat Is On. The Heat Is On. The Heat Is On. All right. And that's 75. And I kept saying I could see the, the, the cover. That's The yeah. Heat Is On was a good album too. Make yeah. Me Say It Again. Yeah. For the Love Of You. Yep. You know what I'm saying? On. That's that's yeah. and sensuality part one and part two. Yeah. And never every day I see. Damn. Yeah. Holding your clothes. Now to me. we also talk about a band. 
who mm-hmm. was not only just yeah, they not were only dope. just musically tight, mm-hmm. but lyrically. And I, Ron Ozzy was in his bag. Well, they was gonna be tight because they they brothers. You know, you grew up playing. You go, they gonna they be, gonna be tight. tight, right? Yeah, they exactly. gonna be tight. Exactly. They been playing together since they was kids. Exactly. Exactly. If you ain't tight after all that, you need to stop. All right. I agree. Is there any other names that we need to that we need to mention before we make our before we make our and then y'all real quick, please do not at me or please do not at <laughs> Case and say y'all didn't say Stevie Wonder, y'all didn't say Marvin Gaye, or Aretha y'all Franklin. didn't say Aretha Franklin. What the fuck do we need to say them for? Or you know what? Let's just say it for you know what I mean. Real quick, Marvin Gaye. What do you want us to say? Stevie Wonder. What, what do you want us to say? Aretha Franklin. What do you want us to say? Diana Ross. I don't think she's going to be on this list. Mahogany? Lady Sings the Blues. Yeah. You don't think she's going to be on this list? This list is tight, bro. Yeah, it is. This it list is. is tight, bro. But that was Diana this, Ross. Diana Ross took off in the 70s. This, this, this list is tight, After she bro. left, yeah. All right. And then also, I mean, just to, in some honor. the sweetest thing over. But that's a disco record. I, that's yeah. a disco record. I don't know. But disco was a huge part of the our, 70s. I agree. All right. For black people. And then also let's 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 also just some 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 names in the seventies that we're gonna I don't think is gonna make uh shout out to LaBelle, uh mm-hmm. shout out to Gamble and Huff. I was about to say shout Gamble out to the OJs, shout out to the Ohio players. Like, you know, we we, yeah. we, we feel you, y'all. I mean Gamble and Huff might be might nah. What? <sighs> I mean Gamble and Huff, you think about this. Man, they should no they wrote they wrote I, I was talking to Mr. Gamble one day, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, one of my favorite songs, I had no idea that he wrote till last year. What's that? One of my favorite songs is The Temptations and Diana Ross, um, I'm Gonna Make You Love Me. Love you. I, they did that? Do, Kenny do, Gamble do, wrote do, 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 No, 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 no. I'm gonna make you love that's the, me. Yeah. yeah. That's the, that's the, yeah, so check it. So I was telling him, he was like, yeah, he was like. No, that's Someday We'll Be Together. No, yeah. you're right. And I'm gonna make you, uh, I'll sacrifice I'll for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do so he it. says, um. Oh, so I'm like, I didn't know you wrote that. He said, he said, man, I was in the car one day. Mm. And he said he didn't know that they had remade it. And Temptations is his favorite group. He's like, he almost crashed the car when he came on the radio. That was a beautiful record. I man. never knew that till last year. I, I loved that song. Eddie you. Kendricks with that voice. Oh, baby. that's another thing. That was Eddie Kendricks solo period. David Ruffin solo period. I they love sh- Eddie Kendricks solo stuff. Yes, I do right. love Eddie Kendricks solo yeah. stuff. Yes, yeah. All right, here we go. Time to make some cuts. Who, who, you can't cut none of them. They what? all part of the story. Nigga, we said seven names. That's seven. The cell phone math. We're making some cuts. <laughs> We're making some cuts. The first name off the list to me is the Delphonics. That's the only representation of them doo-wop kind of groups from the 70s. Bro, we got to name seven people. We already got three for sure. So that means we only got room for four. They're not making the list. Oh, yeah, we only got room for four. Oh, I thought you weren't even putting them, just they get their own list, the, the three for sure. Okay. Oh, oh, do you want to do that? Yeah, I thought that's the reason we left them off. I mean, but, no, um, they, I mean, no, we didn't leave them off. Like, we can't leave them where, off. But I it's just it like we given. know these no, three. It's given, yeah. No, they're, well, they're just not coming off. There's no, right, right. There's no way they can come okay, off. Okay, so if we only take it four, then. We, yeah, I see a bunch that got to come off. And we all right, so about let's them. start one by one. Mm-hmm. Delphonics is coming off sure. to me first. Who, who, do you, who, who, are you, who are you taking off? Uh, Diana Ross. You're taking Diana off? Mm-hmm. Okay. You're taking Diana off. Who am I taking off? I'm taking off the Jackson 5. I, that's next one I was going to take For off. For me. And the only reason why is because just their run. I was taking them off too. Yeah. Their run wasn't that long in the 70s. But well, I mean, the Jacksons, if you add the Jacksons, Jacksons to it, it would. Yeah. But it's like, let's be real. They, they, it, it, I don't want to say they fell off, but it wasn't. No, they did. What happened was they left. Yeah, 74, Certain 75, five, left Motown. and then 76, they started coming back to yeah. the end of the decade. And yeah. and Off the Wall was in 72. 79, yes. yeah. Okay, right. um, Parliament Funkadelic got to come off because we already got EWF and wasn't nobody messing with them in the real 70s. Real quick, real quick, before, before, before I'm taking off Parliament Funkadelic, I'm taking Al Green off. Yeah, you better watch your back for grits, niggas. Niggas yeah, coming well, for you. I'm taking. You taking? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm go taking ahead. Al Green off. With these names that's left, I'm about to add Al Green over here. I'm taking Al Green off. You say Parliament Funkadelic. I don't want to take none of them the, off, but the yeah. only reason why I'm having a tough time with t- Parliament Funkadelic is because they were like 
would you say they were pre the premier funk group? Like of the seventies? Yeah. The and funk is such funk. a big part of the of the seventies. Yeah. I, I we, we can Because what's name still was still was rocking in the seventies too, James Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Let's leave them on for now. Mm-hmm. But they are they're probably gonna right come now on. we got one, two, three groups up there. All right. First thing is, I think we're gonna have to take Teddy Pendergrass off. Yep. Yeah. Gotta take off Teddy P. Gotta take off Teddy P. Yeah. Probably have to take off Barry White too. Cause you can't take off Isaac Hayes or Curtis Mayfield. Oh, and you can't take off Parliament Funkadelic, and we only got room for one more after that. So Barry White's gone. As it come to this. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we gotta pick four of these seven. So three gotta come off. Yeah. So Parliament to me screams out that it's hard. Parliament. Oh. You can't take off with the, with the fire though. Fuck no. All right. If you had to pick between Parliament, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and the Osley Brothers, Parliament. I'm picking. I mean, I'm picking. I'm, well, if I gotta pick which one comes off out of all three of them, yeah, Parliament comes off. Mm, now it's that. now we gotta get rid of two. I don't know about that. This is hard. Osley's, Gambling Huff. You just traded Hershel. Earth, you, made, you just made the Hershel Walker trade. That's, that's a terrible trade. What? You took off Parliament Funkadelic out of those three. See, my thing is, Earth, Wind, and Fire was running. They can't shit. come Parliament off. Parliament Funkadelic was a complete movement. Especially I, in the South, the, they ran shit. But the, you're saying the Osleys weren't. We, Not I, like why, Parliament Funkadelic. Why do we disagree on the Osleys so much? Because I love the Osleys. I'm not saying... I'm but not they saying wasn't a movement like Parliament. And you're going to hear about this from your moms, too. Oh, you're going to hear about this. Parliament Funkadelic was, a, especially in the South, dog. They were they ran shit. Anywhere from DC down, it was over when it came to Parliament. <sighs> and Earth Wind and Fire ran. Every, anybody that was around then would tell you that you couldn't get past Earth Wind and Fire. All right, so let, let's let's do this. Keep talking for me if you don't mind. Man. Um, then you got Isaac Hayes and Curtis Mayfield. Um, uh, actually, because Isaac Hayes is a huge blueprint for hip hop. Um. His stuff, so I mean that 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 alone, Curtis Mayfield is a, a whole big part of hip hop. Um, how many names we got? We got. Oh, you may have to take Gambler Huff off, but I, if I had to pick, I would keep Gambler Huff and take Isaac Hayes off, though. All right, all right. O- only because Gambler Huff, keeping Gambler Huff. Puts a whole lot more of the seventies music in a whole lot. You more take artists. off Gamble, yeah. So if you take off Gambler Huff, you're taking off the OJ's. You're taking out the. You're the, taking off LaBelle. Bell, you're, you're taking, taking off. off uh, you're taking te- off the, Teddy Pendergrass. You're taking off. Harold, you're taking off a bunch of groups. Yeah, Harold, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Yeah, I say Gambler Huff. You're taking things. off the Intruders. You're taking off. Yeah, yeah, you're taking off a lot of stuff. Yeah, you take Gambler Huff off. Spinners. I love the Spinners. Yeah, man. yeah you're taking a lot off. You take Gambler Huff off. All right, so they stay. Yeah. So now we're at that's four. OJ's. So out of these th- so out of these one, two, three, four, five. No, you already erased the Osleys. We did erase the Osleys, yeah. right? You trying right. to sneak them back on? I no, I'm you. not. No, I'm not. So out of these four, Curtis Mayfield, Parliament, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Isaac Hayes. I think Earth, Wind, and Fire is the one we know is definitely staying. We already said Isaac Hayes had to go. No, no, no. But hold on. Let's just. I, I, you, you. No, we didn't say that. You said I got to take off Isaac Hayes. And you said, yeah. I don't, no, no, no. I didn't agree to that. You said it with your eyes. First of all, all right, let's start here. I know for a fact we're keeping Earth, Wind, and Fire on. Right. So. Rock steady, baby. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five. We got room for two more. Parliament, and Curtis Mayfield, two. I would say. what you think? It's rough, right? This is hard. Yeah. But I think I'm going to have to agree with you. It's a dirty game. <sighs> Damn, this is hard. Yeah, it is. So we got Parliament. And we got Curtis Mayfield. Now, now, I'm, I'm conflicted, right? Mm-hmm. 
Because Curtis Mayfield and Isaac Hayes, to me, they're not one and the same, but it's like that... that uh, Finish that sentence. They're not one and the same. Oh. I didn't say... Uh, yeah, I... I oh. Yeah, I'm going to do the rest of that. But... Okay. Superfly or Shaft? Which one's better? Superfly, to me. I agree. I agree. And that, I, Let me I ask y'all, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask y'all out there. Superfly or Shaft? Now, my thing is, some people will say it's not close, Superfly. Do you say it's not close? Yeah, I, I do, actually. I don't think it's Superflies. Yeah, no. When you think of the 70s, that's, that's the yeah. songs that you hear in your head. No, when I'm thinking of the 70s, man, I'm thinking of Job Turkeys. I'm thinking of, yeah, man. But that's the song, the, that type of song is yeah. what I'm hearing. No, I, I, no, I don't I'm not hearing me. Chef. I'm not hearing Chef. I'm hearing Freddie's Dead. Yeah. Doom, no, I'm doom. hearing, yeah, you hearing. Doom, doom, yeah, doom, I'm doom, also hearing, doom, I'm, doom, I'm doom. your pusher, man. I didn't want to be here. I was just a nothing <laughs> child. Yeah. yeah. Damn. And think about this. See, you fixated on them two soundtracks. No, no, no. I'm Remember not. Remember the not, other stuff he did. Let's I'm do not, it again. I'm not, I'm oh, not okay, fixated okay. on. I'm just. I'm going. Oh, yeah. I was going track, but like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's all. I wasn't. Yeah. That. That's not the separator to me. Uh, but. Yeah, because he got. Let's do it again. Yeah. Buddy, no. 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 He has sparkle. some shit. No. He got shit. Curtis Mayfield got shit, man. Which is what's name involved, but made it over to giving him something. Yeah. 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 yeah that's yeah, Curtis no, Mayfield. I agree. I agree. Yeah, Curtis got down. Curtis definitely got down. He said Which, nigga on the record. So we're giving him the nod. Be, we're giving Curtis Mayfield the nod over Isaac Hayes because he said nigga. No. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm that teasing. would be some real bullshit. <laughs> Niggas just giving it. Nah, it's just, it, for me anyway, when I think of the 70s, that music pops in my head. The the beginning, that da -da 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 -da, the strings in the beginning, yeah. that super fly. That's what you picture. Um, which, and that's, that's even how we say how Isaac Hayes with the hip hop stuff, that's all Pharrell was doing in Sleepy Brown when it came out was Curtis Mayfield. Isaac Hayes looked like Sleepy Brown. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Sleepy Brown and Isaac but, Hayes are the same guy. Yeah, but they, but that's what they were doing. What Pharrell was doing it. I thought I told your boys, but all oh, that's Curtis Mayfield, and that's what Sleepy Brown was doing. You're right. But this ain't for no dog of teeth. That's all. That's all Curtis. I Mayfield. can hear Curtis Mayfield do it. Yeah, that's all it is. And I think Sleepy, I heard Sleepy in an interview say that. He met Curtis Mayfield. He's like, Sleepy, keep doing, keep doing what you're doing. He's like, oh, that's Curtis Mayfield. But when I think the 70s, I think the opening to the to Superfly. Little child, running wild. You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. But it is a hard cut. If that hard. being said, it's a, it's a hard cut. I agree. And Parliament was such a movement that you can't. Yeah. All right. That's where we are. We're telling the story of 70s R&B. You can only give seven names. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please, with these seven names, yeah. we're not saying other people, because I know right. y'all going to be like, where's the Osleys, bro? There's so many people. And real quick, the Osleys was his cut. <laughs> not my cut, all right? But that's neither here nor there. We're telling the story of 70s R&B. Here's these seven names. Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, Gamblin' Huff, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Parliament, Funkadelic, Curtis Mayfield, with with our two honorable, with three honorable mentions. Four, because we forgot somebody. Who? Smokey Robinson. I'm not putting he him created in the 70s. A, he created, I'm not putting him Quiet in the 70s. Storm, he created the format. No, I don't give a fuck what Smokey he created. Robinson died? He's in the 60s. No, he's not. Nigga. He's the 60s. He was in the Miracles in the 60s. He's in the 60s. He went solo in the 70s. He wrote in the 60s. 70s. He wrote in the he, 70s too. He was ass in the 70s. Soft and... Quiet Storm is a ring, nigga. That album is a no, ring. No, it's not. This nigga's crazy. Uh, no, Smokey, no, no. Smokey Robinson, Quiet Storm is not a ring? Nope. This nigga's crazy. No, just because somebody decided to make a format called the Quiet Storm. No, 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 no. It's has not, nothing no, to do they with, didn't do it. No. It's the music that's in that album is Quiet Storm music. But go ahead. No, and that's not the reason it's a ring, but go ahead. I don't got Smokey Robinson in the 70s. Okay. Nope. Cool. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope. Him and that mustache can leave in the 70s. He didn't have a mustache yet. It was a little bit. The mustache was ass. <laughs> You he know? had the beard and he had the sheepskin on the cover. Yeah, whatever, man. You mad you didn't have a sheepskin. But who's our, who's our, who's our, all right, we always do this at the end. Mm -hmm. Case, you have to take somebody off personally and put somebody on. What are you, who are you doing? If I had to take somebody off and put on? Yeah, like personally. 
Oh, that shit personal right there. Me. Um, uh, ah, so this is your list. No, it's our list. We agreed on it. No, I, I, I don't agree with one. What did you not agree with? I'm, I'm, I would have been okay taking Parliament. No, I wouldn't have. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, that's our list. That ain't my list. But if I have to take somebody off and if put you somebody, had in, to take somebody. If I off. had to. I'm taking off. I'm taking off. Taking off Aretha Franklin, mm. and I'm putting on the Osley Brothers. Uh, yeah. If I Good had, night, ladies to, and gentlemen, if I had to, I told you how I felt about Aretha Franklin's movie. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I remember when you said it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I'm not. Again, she is '70s R&B. She she's the queen. Yeah, she, she earned it. But yeah. you asked me if I had to. I mean, we, we, but you're not taking nobody off. This is your list. You have to. There's people I would add, but there's nobody I would take you off. You have to. I have to take somebody off? I had to do it. You didn't have to. Yes, you, you do. To. We, that's the point of this. You <laughs> if have I to. had to take somebody off yeah. and add and add somebody too, who would I add? Um, first, let me think of who the hell up would I add? Uh, I can't think of anybody I would add. You have to add and take off. Okay, so just for the sake of Actually, us kids you know in the what? 70s. I would take Aretha off and put on Isaac Hayes. If I had to, just for the sake of, because he was our superhero in the seventies, I would take Curtis off and put Michael Jackson. If I had to, that was his his solo albums. Got to be there. Been off the wall. The Destiny album, which was the Jacksons. Yeah, it would be the Jackson Five slash Jacksons. Nigga did the robot, nigga. Yeah, like I said, I wouldn't take nobody off, but he made me. He got a gun pointed at me. You can't see it, but that's fair. All right. We did it. I put Carl Douglas, Kung Fu Fighting. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate y'all listening to this episode. Please do me a favor. Make sure y'all like, subscribe. You know, make sure you actually get updates, right? Like download, yeah. down, like, yeah. like subscribe to the podcast exactly. on Apple or, or, or Spotify and actually listen and, and, you know, get an update yeah. every time we put it out. Uh, put it out, out. Yeah. Every time we put yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same out. thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, another one in the books. It was hard, but we made it happen. It's definitely hard. Thank you for listening. Thank you for laughing. Thank you for loving. This podcast is over.